two. Okay. This is uh this is Comrade Net with uh Dr. Weisfeld. Um we are gonna talk about some things that are of the pressing nature of the now. Um, we're both second generation Holocaust survivors. We are both the last of our surname. And um, it seems that in our situation, you know, we have the most common enemy, which is Zionism. The Zionist state. Um, what is your background, uh, Net? Oh, my background. Okay, well, so um, I, my background is basically a... a um, Sephardim that claim to be Levites. I don't think that. I think we made that up, but we are Sephardim. Um, we were carriers of a very, very old mystical archaic theology, uh, which goes all the way back to the time of the Gomorrah. And um, it, it, it this type of theology makes it literally impossible for you to be a, a Zionist. It would put Nature Carter to shame, you know, which is why I believe my family was constantly targeted by the Zionists. Uh, what was that? Um, were the Zionists uh, because the where was that? Well, I mean, m my family after the Holocaust was largely in Lebanon, um, uh, Yugoslavia, then later Macedonia, Morocco, um, some places in Turkey. Um, uh, not as much in Turkey, but like, but but we were in Turkey. Um, some of us were in Budapest apparently too. But I just, I it, it's very large. We were throughout the Arab and the European world. For a long time, but there's, I'm the last one with the surname. The other ones that were still alive, they were old, you know. But but the people around my age and even younger were actually killed off by the Zionists. And in uh, Lebanon, yeah, Lebanon was the favorite place. That was the favorite. That was the preferred place. How did um, that happen? Well, in, in well in, in 2006, the you know the the Israelis came into Lebanon, you know and they, you know, there were conflicts that they had with several of the people, including um, Jewish Lebanese. Um, there isn't many Jewish Lebanese left. Um, they, they're still there and they rebuilt the synagogue, you know, but there isn't many of them left. I mean, like, uh, when I first met you, um, it was around 140 that I can recall call and i've heard estimates that it's even lower than that now that it's down to 70 people i i never get a full coherent answer to how many there are but all of those that have my surname that were left over there they were old much old, way much older than me and they died of old age and the, those that were my age and even younger at times um they they were usually killed in conflicts my cousin was killed by these by the israeli you know by uh, by a bombardment how how did uh how was he killed I've, uh, she, I've, uh, she, 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 my cousin. She uh, was very close to me. Um, I learned from her. She was trying to teach me Arabic. Uh, um, but uh, but she she was killed at point blank range, you know. You mean shot by a rifle? Yeah. Um, no, no, it was a pistol, actually. I don't I mean I don't know if it was a pistol, but it was a handgun. Yes. You know, and, and he she was told to get up and she wouldn't get up because she was giving an elderly man water, you know. Um I don't remember all the details of what I, what were laid back to me, but I do know which man this was because he was known as the storyteller. Uh huh. What was her name? Um, my, my um my sister um was uh, Dina Mazel. Dina was the first name. Mazel is the middle name. No, but your cousin who who was killed. Yes, Dina Mazel Ben Yehoshua. Oh, slowly, slowly. Dina Mazel Ben Yehoshua. Ah, uh huh. Uh -huh. Um. And that was in 2006. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I worked at the uh, Palestine Embassy uh, for Israel's in invasion of uh, 1982 to 85. In, in the in the Lebanon War versus Lebanon and Israel, the Jewish uh, people signed up for the army to go against Israel. Like the thing that a lot of people don't know is Lebanese Jews is the biggest embarrassment. That's the biggest embarrassment Israel has. Yeah. Um, and they ranged from uh, uh, super observant to almost non-observant. There was a whole thriving community, but but they all did share the synagogues and the yeshivas, most of which are no longer there, but 
but they did restore like the, the prominent uh, synagogue, um, which was open to Sephardim and Mizrahim. Like that's that's all it was with Sephardim and Mizrahim. In fact, that's another thing about Lebanon. It's where Sephardim and, and Mizrahim met typically, where they converge mm -hmm. and intermarry. Mm -hmm. Or it was. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, yes. I so see you, you, uh, have a parallel condition to my own family, you know, which has uh, very little left to it. it. During this current conflict, I have, you know, with the with the Zionist at the uh, Jewish Community Center, for which I was arrested and barred for the moment. Um, that has really revealed, you know, the uh, the differences, you know, within my own family. You know, I don't have uh, any communication left with. Uh, my cousins in Toronto, my Canadian cousin who was here before, before the Holocaust, who uh, well, the Canadian Jewish community was not, you know, the greatest defenders, you know, of the uh, Jewish people during the Holocaust in Europe. Let's put it that way to start off with. So it doesn't seem as if, you know, she's willing to communicate with me anymore, even though, and in fact, you know, she's quite a prominent Zionist herself in the Canadian establishment. And then, you know, the, uh, the cousin that I have, you know, from my father's brother, his Israeli uh, wife was uh, one of these uh, former Israeli soldiers, you know, who pleads her case by claiming that she only folded parachutes, <laughs> which is like this cliche that uh, they're told to say in response to the question of what they did during the military service that they made, you know, to the state. The almighty state there. Actually, you know, the state owns all the property that uh, the Jewish Israelis uh, live in and think that they own. It's the state, you know, which rents them, you know, the property for a lease of 99 years, but they don't actually own it themselves. They're just renters from the state. The state, is, the state, you know, of Israel is this, you know, incredible sort of monstrosity. So it's, uh, um, it's, it's guilty of a consistent uh, genocide and, and cultural genocide against the Jewish people, as well as the Palestinians and a particular hatred and fear and not knowing what to do about the Jewish Palestinians of Meir Sharim, particularly. And, uh, well, you can call that cultural genocide. It's not genocide. Um, they're obliged to subsidize their family production, actually. Uh, Zionism is not that powerful. And they have many, you know, factors uh, which undermine it as well. And now, you know, uh, we have the uh, resurgence of the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund, which is yes. contesting Zionism. And Zionism, you know, would have preferred to ignore what uh, Bund means. And it's certainly not taught in the Hebrew schools. So it's something that, you know, a grandfather or grandmother was one time, you know, who never talked about it anymore because basically they're afraid. You know, well, the other generation of Bundists, you know, Jewish labor Bund, you know, in particular, are afraid of the Zionists, just like they were made to be, you know, in the uh, refugee camps, my father was telling me, that, you know, the Zionists would uh, beat up uh, the Bundists who would, tell you know the other refugees that it wasn't a good idea to go to palestine because that would be you know like jumping into another war so these uh the older generation of bundes you know have been very quiet it's not even you know, known amongst the survivors that come to the survivors meeting at the jewish community center who you know were bundes or who are bundes it's just not talked about you know so, you know, it's our presence, you know, is very compelling and uh, creates a, a condition that uh, that can no longer be ignored. I was talking with you about this previously. You took some notes, I think, that you wanted to ask me about. Well, yeah. Um, and we should. Yeah. Um, in fact, this, this goes right into what you were just talking about. The, the Zionist state, um, as you describe it, is is operates or just literally is a dictatorship over the Jewish people in Montreal and 
in North America in general, we should we should get into that then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, all of a sudden the Zionist, you know, parties are claiming the Jewish Community Center as, as like a private property, and not only that, but also claiming the sidewalk <laughs> and the lamppost as well, you know, just to for good measure, claiming that this is a private property that I, you know, violated by going and writing and a free Palestine on the Israel Day Parade poster that was attached to a public lamppost. Well, you know, they can't take it, you know, because they have no answer. You know, what are they going to say to that? You know, like that it's uh, anti-Semitic. Well, even the police don't think it's anti-Semitic. That is the police, you know, who are responsible for the hate crimes division don't think it's anti-Semitic, but they're laying the charge anyway, because they were told to. So, you know, like what has that much, you know, like pressure on the police to accomplish something like that, you know, for a poster that's worth $2.01. That's the power of the Zionist parties that include the local Zionist members and include the leadership, which comes from within the state itself. So the state, you know, through its parties, exerts a kind of dictatorship, a political dictatorship over the Jewish community here in Montreal, you know, and all of North America, as far as I, I'm concerned, and uh, probably uh, everywhere else as well. The opposition in the diaspora, you know, cannot be suppressed, you know, effectively like it was in uh, inside the, the Zionist state itself. But even that is breaking down, you know, the opposition there the, within the Zionists, you know, between the Zionist parties has become something that approaches civil war even. But here, you know, like the Zionist parties are all united and rejecting, you know, any mention of the Jewish Bund, and they will not allow it to be given a uh, form in which to uh, speak and or to be heard or to be seen even, you know, that's a crime now, criminal mischief, that is. Yeah. I, 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 forgive me if I repeat this throughout the thing, because everything uh, we discussed and they're about to speak to the audience of tells me that you are, um, I mean, I've already said this publicly before on the Buddhist Movement channel, but I, but it is just the truth. You are being politically targeted because you brought back the boon. You brought back the boon. I brought back the boon, and I'm practicing it. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, by writing and the free Palestine is uh, you know like is an action. You know, I I knew it was a bit of a risk, but I didn't think that they would you know freak out to this extent because it's so counterproductive in terms of uh, them wanting to make Jewish people forget about the Jewish Bund or not know about the Jewish Bund. And now uh, it will be known. I, I was I was afraid something like this was going to happen to you soon because the most prominent um, conservative synagogue I mean, the martyrs talked about this actually, about these 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 two synagogues, the Reform Synagogue and the Conservative Synagogue, the most prominent in the world. Uh, Central Synagogue is the most prominent Reform Synagogue in the world. It's here in the United States, and the most prominent Conservative Synagogue is also here in the United States, Park Avenue. And you see their way of trying to apologize for Zionism, their apologia for you know their apologism for Zionism shift in a way where they have to be tolerant of the boot. Zion liberal Zionists having to do that, you know, as a desperate attempt. And so, to, so, and that gets into the next thing that we talked about, that there is this uh, 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 juridical, yeah, juridical, um, you know, very legalistic battle between uh, Jewish Bundism and uh, Zionist parties worldwide. Well, is, between the Jewish Socialist Bund now, it's an yes. accusation against me in particular. And, you know, I'm, I'm the chairman of the Jewish Socialist Bund, so it's attacking the Jewish Socialist Bund. And uh, I defend the Jewish Socialist Bund, you know, in front uh, of the public in the court against the Zionist parties. And uh, I'm not just defending myself. It's not well, Zionists have know, lost the younger generations completely. Yes. You know, uh, they know that that was you. They know that that was you. Like, they're not going to say that publicly to, like, world governments, but, I mean... And, and that's what worries me is I, I think that they know. I think that they talk about this amongst themselves. I mean, 
who the prosecutor is doesn't even seem to be that clear other than the crown prosecutor who like is obviously a front man for other people that's the way it sounds to me well they knew me because i gave my card you know to the librarian when i handed in my book so it was my book that was known when the book you know the federation of palestinian and, and the hebrew nations you know it was given to her she sort of decided that it was anti-israel and and uh, she, basically she's followed me out you know and uh, when i wrote the words you know she had me arrested i think that that's what happened so uh you know, it was the concept of a federation, the federation of Palestinian and Hebrew nations. And then that means the Bund, of course, but maybe, you know, this person doesn't even know what the Bund is. You know, that's how ignorant the Zionists are. But nonetheless, it's an attack on the Jewish Bund. And the uh, Jewish Labor Bund should uh, be notified of this, which I will take on the responsibility of doing. You know, they should be coming to defend you know the Jewish Bund here. Yeah, it, it, the ignorance is definitely possible because I, I've seen a lot of ignorance from Zionists, but I've also seen Zionists. Um, when you say the boom, they 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 they, they, they there's like a, a strange mix up and a fear and aggression. You know, in the tone of the voice and the way that their eyes shift. You know, when they hear the boom. Okay. What else did you have there? Um, a, a thing that uh, I think we mutually concluded that um, that the Zionists cannot tolerate the Jewish socialist boom, and the reason being is that Zionism is coming to their Zionism is coming to its own logic. The Zionists are coming to their own essence. They are they are they are becoming what they always were, like. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Okay. You know, this current government, you know, demonstrates, you know, what the essence of Zionism is. You know, this is a declared Zionist government, even with the support of the non-Zionist, you know, Shas party for, uh, you know, reasons of uh, obtaining its exemption from military duty because they're not Zionists in the first place, you know. So it's a, a, a right-wing Zionist party, you know, that doesn't even have, you know, a uh, hegemony within its own coalition, but is nonetheless, you know, acting, you know, as the very essence of Zionism, which is a dictatorship over not only the Palestinians, but now it's demonstrating that it's also dictatorship over the Jewish people as well. Because we don't have a vote, you know, like we did not vote in that government. And yet that government is imposing its law upon us. And the law is that you cannot use the words free Palestine, even when you say and a free Palestine. The law is that you cannot speak in public against the government of Israel, even though within the Jewish community, such opportunities are severely limited. You cannot do anything that <laughs> displeases the Zionist parties, you know. <laughs> it's incredible, you know, how tight, you know, this dictatorship is, especially here in Canada, you know, which we wanted to talk about as well, you know, the difference between the Jewish communities in Canada and the United States. Because Canada, you know, like is about twice as repressive in terms of the uh, polling, you know, data that indicates, you know, the uh, the uh, political views, you know, of the Jewish community here in Canada as compared with the United States. It's usually, you know, like about half of what the United States is. So it's twice as repressive. The, the, the thing is, is that it, I, I don't think that it was expected that American Jewry would start really snapping against Zionism. But, but people forget that American Jewry was critical of Zionism actually very early on. It, it's largely the 1980s where they where the Zionist narrative takes takes over the, the like, you know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be too fantastic with it, but it's almost like it's really the 80, in the 1980s where the Zionist like mind control collectively over you know the jewish people mm. and i i think that that started to actually break down a bit in the 2000s but it really it really was falling up it was really in the 2010s i mean you and i were really working on the buddhist you know the 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 operation of the of the jewish uh buddhist diaspora movement mostly just through the 2010s that's that's large but that is also the period where the struggle between Zionist and anti-Zionist among Jewish Jewish people was it uh, about, but it was the, the base for that was the United States. 
that was the base where that really happened. You know, and yes, I think because that because of the uh, of the reform movement, you know, the reform movement, you know, was was significant in the United States, but not in Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada was much more orthodox. Well, like, again, and that's and more than orthodox. The reform, the reform used to be just as anti-Zionist as, right. as the orthodox, yeah. and and a, there was an outcry amongst them that they wanted to go back to that, and a lot of the youth were screaming for that. And then yeah. though the youth that were reformed found the boon, and before the reform, were never into the boon. And that, that there's a whole political Jewish uh, Jewish uh, political uh, paradigm shift that has occurred here. Mm. You know. Yeah, but. You know, even though I refer to the reform movements, you know, anti-Zionism and its founding principles, the reasons that they gave for being anti-Zionist were not progressive reasons. I mean, they're calling for the, basically assimilation in public and maintaining, you know, uh, Judaism as a personal uh, fam fam familial uh, tradition. But, you know, they, they weren't Jewish, you know, like outside of the home and they would change their names as well, you know. So yeah. uh, that, you know, wasn't a rationale that could endure. And that's why it collapsed. It's anti-Zionist critique collapsed and they became pro-Zionist because they had no answer to the Zionists. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's that's what made them vulnerable to it. You know, but, um, and part of the problem is, is you got to get people to understand that nation does not always, it, it, nation is often tied to ethnicity, but it's not always. It can be tied to religiosity. Like the first, the base of any nation is culture. And there is a Jewish culture. There is an actual root Jewish culture. And um, yes, Zionism... The reform uh, movement did not consider it to be national culture. That is correct. That is correct. They they saw Jewish as just a religion. Yeah. That was the now, that model problem. is, you know, the French model nowadays. You know, French, uh -huh. France and Germany, you know, they imposed that kind of, you know, paradigm on the Jewish people, uh, which was worse, you know, than what, you know, the uh, Muslim, you know, Ottoman state, you know, imposed upon the Jewish people of the Dehemi de status, you know, because the repression was more so because the Hemi status allowed for self-identification, allowed for one to be, you know, Jewish in public. France, no. You know, like even, you know, Muslim dress is now prohibited, you know, for for women students in France. They've just been told this, you know, this last I've week. I've heard that. And you, you can know. have a cross apparently around your neck. Though. Oh, yes, a small cross, that's permitted, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. you know, Christian secularism, they call it, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marxists <laughs> refer to Christian secularism as a common, you know, uh, ethic, you know, of the working class. <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> where are you coming from, you know, you Marxists? <laughs> you know, what kind of Marxists are you? <laughs> Well, it's you know, all I, part. It's all part of that um, feel-good spirituality and and and. Uh, yes. You know. Yeah. Just saying the word spiritual, you know, makes you feel spiritual. You know. Like, well, yeah, yeah, but this is this is why, like, I, I I I say, like, all these extra concepts, you know, secular this, spiritual that. This seems to be a way to keep people away from thinking about democracy. I would rather people be thinking about democracy. Democracy is what matters, not secularism or spirituality in this sense. Because in democracy, you can have your identity as it really is. You don't have to constantly just, but that's kind of the problem. There's no democracy under capitalism. There's no democracy under colonialism. It's where we are. And I, I think that that's part of it. The Jewish socialist boon is a step forward beyond what the old Jewish labor boon was and even the remnants of it that's here. And I think that that's part of it is it's a reassertion, you know, um, which definitely was because of you, you know, and I, again, like I, I am saying it again, but it's, it's just true. You, you are being politically targeted. This is a, there's a sort of political pressure that you're suffering under. Yes. But, you know, you know all my life I've been working, you know, as a Jewish Bund, Bundist, you know, whether it was, uh, in the new democratic party of Canada, social democratic party or the Trotskyist fourth international LSA or in the forward group. Or, you know, I, I, I've always done that, you know, but I was not really alone, you know, because there is a Jewish Bund underground, you know, amongst the refugees for, mm -hmm. within which I was raised, you know, in addition to, you know, to my mother, you know, a Jewish Bundist, you know, from the, from the Warsaw ghetto. But, uh, but to speak out, you know, like I had to develop the tools, you know, to be able to do so, you know, by becoming an academic and, uh, because it was very ostracizing, you know, to be isolated like that, you know, by both uh, the Zionists and the Marxists, uh, you know, who were pro-Zionist at the time, you know, or, or were afraid, you know, to speak up because they didn't know what anti-Semitism is and they thought that they could be accused of anti-Semitism and they wouldn't know how to defend themselves. <laughs> Rather pathetic, you know, for 
such learned uh, people. Nonetheless, you know, like uh, I have, you know, continued on, you know, because, you know, when you learn how to be a survivor from your parents, you know, like you do it, you know, you practice it, you know, and I know how to survive. Yeah. So um, the 12th of September mm -hmm. is going to be an interesting day, you know, to see what's going to be happening there. You know, I have to get myself organized for that. Uh, but we should do another video about some other questions, you know, like uh, personally, you know, like I have a different view of Judaism, you know, and the uh, deity and the creator and all that, you know, then. then... That is something I do want us to talk about is the difference of our views of that, you know, because like um, you do represent a, a position that still very much exists, I would say. And I represent a position that also still very much exists. Yeah. Um, you know, both positions still being very heavily repressed you know by like a certain status quo of like well this is what jewish is and that's all it is yeah uh, okay so yeah there's time now to do this you know we're getting ready so it's time to explain to the general public just what uh, the jewish bund uh, was is and uh is what you're hearing now we are the jewish socialist bund you can check us out you know in terms of the um uh, Writings available with all the links, you know, and all that, you know, at the website, which is uh, jewish-socialist-bund.net. Very simple. Okay, so uh, see you soon, Ned, and we'll do another video. Great. Okay. And as we say, Kaimel Nish Nachamol. Kaimel Nish Nachamol.